NASCAR on Fox welcomes you to FX's coverage of NASCAR Winston Cup racing today in the MBNA Platinum 400 from the concrete confines of Dover International Speedway. Over 140,000 people have filled every available seat and every room in the adjacent hotel and covered grandstand to see 43 Winston Cup drivers go at it for 400 miles on a track that's high banked in the turns and nine degree banked in the straightaways. Let's go trackside for today's opening ceremonies. Race fans at this time, if you would please rise for our invocation being presented by Reverend Dan Schaefer, pastor of the Calvary Assembly of God in Heightstown, New Jersey. Reverend Dan. Shall we pray? Almighty God, we are honored to be here this day at Dover International Speedway. We thank you for those who have made this race possible. We thank you for all the teams and all the fans. And now we ask you that this may be a safe race, that, that you would watch over each one and keep your protection upon each one. And we thank you and praise you in your name. Amen. Shalom. And our national anthem today is being sung by rising star from Nashville, recording artist Shannon Brown. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave Peru That our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner wave for the land of the free and the The most famous words in racing today will be spoken by a man who just recently was inducted to the Delaware Sports Hall of Fame, Melvin Joseph, Vice President and Director of Auto Racing for Dover Motorsports. He'll make the call. Start your set to go racing on the Monster Mile. We'll let you enjoy a little hot rodding from our Crank It Up CD. We're ready to race here in Dover. I'll have a sense, son. You won't drive me to drink it if you don't stop driving that hot rod Lincoln. <laughs>
Welcome back to Dover International Speedway, where the cars are on their first of three pace laps. Let's look at the STP starting grid. Matt Keseth has his first career pole, but with an engine change, will move to the back. Bill Elliott makes his third front row start. That would move Jerry Nadeau up to the inside of row one, but he crashed during practice. He was second here last September. He goes to the back. He's there with Michael Walter. That would move Kurt Busch up, but no, he crashed on his second qualifying lap, so he goes to the back. Ricky Craven alongside. And Ricky Rudd will move up to the pole position as the inside row moves up. Elliot Sadler starts alongside as you look through the rest of the grid. Elliot Sadler, uh, DW here. How you read, bud? Did you let it clear, champ? Uh, you had some success on the concrete at uh, Bristol. How about today? How's your hot rod? I'm real happy with the DW. We got us a good qualifying run. We have a pretty good happy hour. A little tight, so uh, Pat freed me up a little bit. And... Uh, not nothing like better do to get the Wood Brothers to win here today. Man, we think we got a really good car, so we'll see what happens. All right, my man, it's 400 miles here, so uh, tighten them up, and we'll be watching. I appreciate it, and uh, Matt Yoker wants to know why so many mulligans, DW. Uh, I used them all, too. I had 16 of them. <laughs> and boy, y'all have fun today. That's inside information. How do you get that? 16 <laughs> mulligans? Well, they said you can have all you wanted. I shot 78. <laughs> and do you play golf or you just well, knock the ball I around just, a little? I just like to buy mulligans. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right, here's the rest of our starting lineup. As we finish it out, we did have three cars that went home. As you look back through provisional land. John. What Elliot Sadler I'm, was talking about is we all played golf in an autism awareness golf tournament on Thursday for our director, Artie, Artie Kipner. And that's why I bought so many mulligans, because it was all for charity. For charity. So uh, I didn't really need them. Now, in need of a mulligan is Matt Kenseth, who lost an engine. Jerry Nadeau crashed in practice. Kurt Busch and also uh, Chad Little and John Andretti changed engines. And Ryan Newman, who crashed on his second qualifying lap, also will have to go to the back to start this race. Now, we've talked about hooligans, and we never did figure out what they were. Where did where did Mulligan come from? Sure, it was. Well, I'll tell you that story later. Oh, During okay. a long caution. <laughs> Here's our low German Ultra race analysis. 43 cars, 400 miles. And Larry, today's pit window. 85 to 90 laps. And, uh, you know, this race is known to have cautions in the beginning. But in the middle, everybody finally settles down. And we'll have some long green runs. Goodyear's brought a good tire here, so uh, you can go that far. Today's weather and race analysis brought to you by New Lotrim and Ultra, the only once a day cure for athlete's foot. Of course, growing the concrete, 105 degrees, about 20 degrees cooler than the asphalt. The thing I like about the concrete, it don't change that much. It's not as weather sensitive. Yeah, but, uh, you know, it just doesn't seem to have the grip that asphalt has either. So uh, the cars actually slide a little bit more, build up more tire pressure. That's the thing that always drove me crazy here, Larry, was the tire pressure build up. Going home. Derek Cope, Hermie Sadler, Randy Renfro from this race. As uh, these folks want a boogie, Derek. Oh, buddy, they right. like it. There was a Scotsman named Mulligan, and he bounced around driving his car to the course on the gravel roads, and his hands were shaking. So can I have an extra shot off the tee? And now we're done. And let's go racing. Come. Here they come, and let's go. Boogity, boogity, boogity. Go, boys. Car. He fought hard to get to the bottom of the racetrack. We'll see two or three grooves of racing, but everybody like to see if their car worked on the bottom here with fresh tires. Yeah, the, the first beginning. couple of laps, man, it is touchy good. The cars are just a little bit loose. The track's dirty. Takes a few laps. It's always trouble early on. Robbie Gordon up high, up out of the groove. Save. And continue. And that's what you run into, Mike. You just push up off the corner, hit the outside retaining wall off of two and four. Trying to get down, that's the big thing. Trying to get down that inside because not a lot of grip up high right now. There will be later, but there's not right now. And then Sadler, the 21, he kicks Michael Walter up to the high side. Jimmy Johnson would like to take advantage of this as well. This is a battle for fifth. The guys in the back, they just got to be real cautious. They're all holding their breath, hoping everybody minds their manners here for a few laps. Be kind to each other, guys. Be kind to each other.
Starting to see some of our leaders. Darrell already starting to dime in this racetrack. Driving low, let it ride up a little bit, a little easier on the tire, and then come off low. Which is it's what works good here. Drive in hard, the car wants to slide up the hill. So rather than trying to jerk it back down to the bottom, get it loose, you'll just kind of what we call dime in the corner. High in the middle, in low, off low. Plus, you can get back in the throttle so much better when you've got that kind of straighter run up off of either corner. Here comes Jimmy Johnson under Elliott Sadler. Made that one look easy and takes over fifth place. He did, but he, he again, he got it up kind of high in the middle, and he shot right out the corner, right under the 21 car. Looking back at ninth place, Mark Martin, Kenny Schrader. Two groove racetrack all the way back. Guys in the back, Larry, and they're not wasting a whole lot of time. They're doing just what Tony Stewart said. Get them while they're grouped up, bunched up like this, while everybody's racing each other. You can make a lot of passes, but it's also the most treacherous time of the race. Brett Bodine and Bobby Hamilton, this is the battle for 21st. Brett Bodine with a new crew chief this weekend, Buddy Cisco. And here comes Ricky Craven right after the man who dominated this race last year, Jeff Gordon. But you know, Ricky Craven a year ago, he had a good race call in that last green flag stop. His crew did not give him the pit stop he needed, lost a lot of ground. Well, OTIDE had a great run last week in Charlotte. They told me this morning, they said, DW, pick him because he's going to be strong today. Yesterday, in the Bush race, Jeff Green set sail, lapped a whole lot of cars in the first green flag run. We may see the same situation here. And you can do that. You know, the car that gets up front just seems to be able to just run so much faster when he's out in the front like that. He just pulls away, and, man, you can put a lot of cars lapping down early when they're back here racing each other. Kyle Petty, sprint dodge underneath Michael Waltrip, and Waltrip tries to close the door in turn three, but leaves a big hole there on the bottom. Kyle's last win here was in June of 1995. He felt like he could run good here. He's been running good all year long for the first time. Hot here this weekend. He's running a helmet air conditioner for the first time in his career. And you know what? He'll never go back to the other way. He'll always have it. <laughs> now on, I can tell you. That's right. You buy one car with air conditioning, you'll never buy another one without it, right? You're, I, you're sitting there saying, I cannot believe what I was missing out on. Look at Mike. Mike will be right up against that wall. Looked like a crop duster. And Darrell, you would think, running that high up, that Kyle would be able to turn down under, but you keep the car free up there. You keep the momentum up. Well, Kyle needs the whole racetrack. Right here, he needs to be able to slide up, and he did. So he got to slide up in front of Michael. That's what happens when a car's on the outside. You got to check up because you can't slide up in front of him. But where he slid up in front of him, turn two, the biggest give and take place on this racetrack. Now let's update you on the drivers who started in the back and how they've progressed. Kurt Busch has only made it to 40th. The number 10 with Jerry Nadeau has only climbed to 39th, but Matt Kenseth has picked up 10 spots. He's up to 31st. Yeah, he's really, yeah, he just went by the 12th car, Ryan Newman, and that car is really hooked up, guys. And he came here and tested, Larry, and uh, they were really happy with their race car. I think that's why they didn't really care that they had to go to the back or they wasn't that concerned about it. Jimmy Johnson passed. Jeff Power Gordon. Bunch, clear hop. Great job, man. Great job. Please say something for the end of your long run. So Jeff Gordon right now is in fourth place. And make that fifth place now, Steve Burns. Yeah, Mike, you just lost two positions. He's reporting to Robbie Loomis, the crew chief, that he is loose on entry and tight on exit of the corner. And Steve, Darrell, what was what's interesting about that comment, we talked to him yesterday or listened to him during practice, and one thing he had that he liked was his entry.